and welcome to this first episode of the brand new season of What's Past This Podcast. I'm Steve. I'm James. I'm Damien. And I'm Robert. And in this episode, we are going to talk about uh, the changes and updates uh, we have made to the podcast and what we have been up to since uh, the end of Series 1. And if you enjoy the episode, why not like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And if you're listening to us on any other platform, please hit that follow button. The first update we have, uh, or change that we have made, is the intro. I don't know if anybody noticed. Yeah, I don't think anyone. <laughs> I don't think anyone will take notice of that. You know, um, I think it's no. exactly the same as we've done last time. Yeah, <laughs> we did spend an inordinate amount of time rehearsing the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the intro. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. As we will have to for the first four or five episodes until it sticks, I think. But uh, no, I think it'll be about <laughs> ten until it sticks. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> knowing me, at least. So, so no change about that from the first uh, season, then. Oh, no change there, then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a while. When was when did we record the last episode of series one? Ooh. Um, it, when did uh, you become busy at uni? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was. I think I was busy the whole way through. It, it was um, either the first or second day we were filming uh, the short film, uh, Broken Homecoming. Oh, was it? It was around then. Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't it towards the end of April, beginning of May, thereabouts? I was going to say, if that, I think you're right. That's what I got in my mind. I don't know why. The dates will definitely be different to all you viewers out there because we recorded in advance and mm. yeah. Well, that's true, yes. And out of order as well. Yes. yes. We recorded episode 19, the la- it was the last one, and it was on the 1st of May 2020. And episode 20... 2021, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> episode 20 was recorded months before then. I think it was like one of the first yeah, few yeah. episodes we've actually yeah. recorded. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just kept on pushing that one back. Ah, so we recorded it four months ago today. Oh, wow. Ooh, blimey. Because it's the 1st of September today we're recording this, so... Oh, yes, that's true, yeah. yeah. At 21.03. So if there's any time travellers listening to this in the future <laughs> that want to uh, show up outside my uh, my door right now. And the address is uh, in the description. <laughs> 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 or, or even show up to Damien's flat and have a word with them upstairs about half an hour ago. Um, yeah, about half, no, no, I would say about a couple of hours ago. Oh, there we go. A couple of hours ago, wow. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to start a paradox there, Stephen, because it's already <laughs> happened. <laughs> oh dear. Two two minutes into the new season and we're already causing paradoxes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it that we just definitely went off topic immediately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm rem- all the, 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 the memories of all the editing are coming back to me now. Oh yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Do you miss it? You miss all that editing. Um, I miss the recordings. Yeah, yeah having a good banter. Yeah. 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 So, um, what have we done since the 1st of May 2021 in the last four months? Steve, what have you been up to? Well, um, I, I took part in a, a short film that we did with Hereafter Productions that was completed. And um, uh, now, uh, is it now online? It is. It, it is, is yeah. yes. Have you not watched it? Uh, yes. Yeah, how would you know if it's online? It's been online for us for like <laughs> almost a month or two more now. There you go. It's been online a month or two now. So uh, <laughs> yeah. go on to our website, hereafterproductions. Link below. UK. It's in the link below. And uh, have a watch of the film. Isn't it on the YouTube channel as well? It's on our U- uh, Hereafter YouTube channel, yes. Yeah. See the links below. I don't, know why yep. I'm putting, I don't know why I'm putting the thumbs up because you can't see that. <laughs> I know that um, after whoever uploads this video, I am going to put on top of YouTube uh, the card for uh, so basically you can click it. Oh, yes, there we go. Lovely, lovely. Speaking of YouTube, <laughs> oh, speaking of YouTube, oh, yeah, we've got a new YouTube channel now. And all you need to do to find us is type in what's passes podcast on YouTube, yep. and a channel should come up. And it makes us a lot more search engine friendly. Brilliant. Yes. Good job. Really good. So we the 
the last episode that we recorded, the one we recorded four months ago, uh, was I think that was the one that we talked about the film, which I guess we just finished making or something. Mm-hmm. Um, so we talked about some of the various trials and tribulations oh, yes. of making <laughs> making that film and some of the nightmares we went through. But um, we were thinking about um, maybe getting one or two of the cast members of that film on to have a little chat about it. Um, yeah, how the experience was for them, but. Uh, Post production was that we've done since then was fairly fairly smooth. <laughs> so I think by comparison, I had to. The worst part was I had to dub some of my lines because the audio was a bit dodgy. Hmm. So that was excuses, nightmare. excuses. You just it was it was entirely my fault with the with the microphones and stuff. But <laughs> but um, for me, I've just just yesterday submitted the last of my masters, so that is done now. Part of that was um, the score for yes. the film, um, which was probably the easiest part of the process. It took about four days, and um, yeah, I think it, I think it turned out okay. Well, now you can dedicate Definitely. most of your time to editing the podcast now. <laughs> ah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> uh, and I'm not even being paid. Damien, what have you been up to? <laughs> uh, nothing much, just... Um editing a few of the green screen projects that we've been doing for the Hereafter oh, channel. Yes, uh, yes. yes. And yes. apart from that, I've not been up too much. Good. Good. So, yes. Yes. Good. Yeah. Well, Very good. That <laughs> makes me seem like I'm doing something helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been doing those green screen videos uh, on Hereafter yeah. just one a month on the last day of the month. So the last one came out yesterday when we were recording this. Um, and uh, yeah, those have been quite fun. I've done a few of them. Steve's yep. done a few of them. Um, and uh, yeah, on so. this last one, we've got mm. our friend Sarah now, haven't we? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. She was one of our guests on a one of last season's episodes. I yeah. had the card right here on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Rob, what have you been up to? Because we actually one of the things we've been doing since the last series was we started work on homicidal, didn't we? Yes. Why don't you update the viewers on yes. on what's going on with that? Well, listeners. um, <laughs> listeners, listeners. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can't remember when exactly we started on that. Um, but we've filmed a few scenes for that. Um, I can try to find the the page that I've been marking them off so but I mean it's not that important um but we've done a few scenes of them anyway mostly like the outdoor um scenes um because we were waiting for like uh the restrictions and 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 stuff you know relating to um uh the pandemic that's happening um to change, <gasps> we shall so... not mention the pandemic here that thing we still <laughs> cannot mention hey you can bleep it out if you want um... <laughs> Um, yeah, we've just been waiting for, for the restrictions to change. So like, you know, we're uh, able to go, um, indoors and, you know, stuff. So, um, so we've it's been concentrating on most of the outdoor scenes. Um, some, like a couple of them we had to, or we still have to redo, um, which would be scene five and scene 10. Um, and, but it's, it's, it's been put on hold now for, um, reasons I'm not quite too sure of, but, um, uh, other than that, um, it's been like a really busy summer, um, at work. So it's, uh, I've been mostly like working, um, and, uh, trying to find time for my own, uh, YouTube channel. Um, it's, I, I've been saying for like the longest time that I need to get into some kind of routine with that. Um, but never happens. Um, well, I've been getting some notifications yeah. that you've been posting more on your YouTube channel. Yeah, I've had a couple too. Oh, good, good. Uh, have you, have you pressed the like button? Have you? Have you... <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't really watched any to be fair. <laughs> wow. Wow, I'm they're busy. entertaining. But no, uh, no, I uh, have seen a few of the videos pop up, to be fair to you. Yeah, but apparently you haven't watched any. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you should. I'm, I'm currently playing uh, Bioshock. 
Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting game. In that case, uh, I definitely will watch it. <laughs> it's on his to-do list. Yes. <laughs> it's no, on I don't know it's on what point list. in his to-do list it is, but it's on <laughs> it's, the list. It's probably on the low priority part of, it, part of it. Low priority? No, it should be a priority. Uh, on I, top of the priority? Just below uh, getting married and buying a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, does, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, doesn't matter. The, what matters is watching my video, pressing that like button on each upload, uh, putting a comment down there. It would like really help me. Like, and just uh, and just like keep keep refreshing your page so I get I get the views as well. Well, this uh, <laughs> this podcast Did episode is now uh, sponsored by Robert's YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just a joke. It's not sponsored. We don't want to get anyone mad at us. <laughs> Looking at you, Susan Wojcicki, whatever your name is, uh, CEO of YouTube. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 that's a sign of a man that spends too much time on yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, what else have we done so uh, the theatres are starting to open back up again um, yeah. which is nice so I uh, happened to go into the culture centre in Holyhead earlier um, and have a little wander around and it's basically exactly the same as it was a year and a half ago. <laughs> Apart from Just slightly cleaner. Yeah, no, slightly cleaner, James. I gotta, I gotta give, gotta give the staff of the Chowder a hand here, um, a nice round of applause from me, really, because um, they've worked very hard trying to clean the place and trying to make it a lot more presentable. They have worked quite hard yeah. doing it, so uh, to be fair to them, yeah, yeah, it does look nice. The shop in particular mm -hmm. looks very. Uh, very sleek, slick. Very, and very I slick. know uh, lots of people don't realise this. Uh, you know, don't look at the floor on the way into places. But um, they've spent round about a month make, uh, polishing and cleaning the floor. Oh, oh wow! Making sure it's nice. sparkly clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I um, Lynn asked for her uh, recorder back because she was uh, wanting to to learn um, something. Um, yeah. and she uses that recorder to uh, record her lines. So um, I met up with her to uh, uh, obviously give the recorder back. Um, but we had a, a bit of a chat in the Echeldra, uh, in the cafe, just, you know, a little, a little catch up, like, and it, like, I have to say, it was just, it was nice to, to be there again, uh, like inside the building, um, you know, just sort of in that sort of, you know, theater environment again after, you know, a year and a half. Um, and uh, you know you can tell that um, you know some work has, has has been done to the place. So you know I'm I'm really looking forward to um, put a live show on there again. Yeah. Well, actually, talking of which, yes, um, we are in the early stages of well, basically we're in pre-production for a panto, a live stage panto that we're hoping to do this Christmas in that same venue. Um, so we we wrote one Dick Whittington at the start of last year that was supposed to be for Christmas 2020. Obviously, that didn't happen, and it was supposed to happen this year. And we basically decided that because it was for a cast of about ten or something, it was a we'd need to find a couple of extra people, and it was going to be a bit of a bit of a pain. So. We decided to basically write this a small one with the people we had definitely around that would be able to do it easily. Um, so we haven't announced what that show is yet, so I won't say. But um, but yeah, that will hopefully be on stage. Hopefully, we'll be back in rehearsals soon as well, which will be nice. And talking about pantomimes as well, we are also in uh, being in the talks with Mon FM to have an another uh, to have an audio pantomime on the air. Mm. Yes. Yeah, we have. And um, right, yeah. and have we uh, released the name of that yet, James? Mm, no, no, we haven't. So uh, basically, keep an ear open for it. Yeah, because we did one on the radio. Well, not on the radio. We did an audio one last year, Cinderella, um, which was which was we we talked know, about we talked well. about that one before. On a, yeah. a, in fact, probably about three episodes of uh, of series one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sure at some point during the, this season we will talk about the upcoming pantos and shows. 
at some point in one of the future episodes. So mm. keep a listener. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and um, so currently I'm just just finished the script or the first draft of the script, and then there's a few uh, few some more editing that will have to happen to it and yep. stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I've overwritten by about four thousand words, so there's <laughs> quite a lot of cutting needs to happen. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so there's that, and then I have to write the script for the radio one as well, um, fairly soon, so we can get that one made. Mm. But uh, yeah, so that's really exciting for us. And we've also got another project as well. Um, a local book author has messaged us oh, in regards yes. to uh, making a stage version of their book. Yeah, and again, we can't. Nothing's agreed on that yet, so we can't say anything too much about it. But yeah, we got an email from, as Damien said, like Lothar, um this uh, sort of children's yeah. book, and so I had a meeting with, uh, with them, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and talked about it, and we're hoping to maybe take that on tour in the Easter, something like that. So that'll be really nice. Something a bit different. Oh yeah, something different. Uh, something that, that we probably haven't done before as well. But it's nice to work with. Uh, it's nice to at least try and t- try to work with um, with other local people, really, with local communities yeah, and absolutely. local absolutely. groups, local individuals. Yeah, and it 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 gets like the name out there as well, like you know, for them and and us. Exactly. So, um, you know, it's all good and it's all fun. So. Yeah, and I've I've wanted to tour something for a while, and we just haven't had the opportunity yet because we were hoping to maybe take a play on tour last summer. Um, but yeah, so it'd be nice to to get out of just that one venue and take some stuff around different places and find different audiences as well. Really, yeah, it would be. I agree. Yeah, we're just you know fingers crossed that. Um, that we're able to finally get back on stage. Um, but yeah, we'll carrying on. We'll be carrying on with with all the the radio things. We've got a few ideas for more short films that we might want to do. There's homicidal. There's the short stories. There's yeah. There's all sorts of projects. We're as busy as ever. In fact, one of the other projects we've got coming up is another short story collection that we're doing for Halloween. Um. So that's I'm finishing writing that at the moment as well. So that should be fun. And that should be slightly different to the short stories that we currently have on the Hereafter YouTube channel. But um mm-hmm. and it will also have every person of the company, won't it, James? Yeah, it's quite nice. I looked at the kind of the list the sort of main list of people that that do projects uh with us and it's it's actually four male, four female, so it's quite nice. Just gonna have eight stories and have it, you know, male, female, alternating like that to a list. So it's it's nice to have a project that everyone is involved in because mm-hmm. I think this will basically be the first one everyone's been in. In mm-hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think that should be nice. Yeah, plenty of stuff to uh, look forward to, and uh, we're we're looking forward to uh, start recording them. Yeah, I've. Um... I started writing your one yesterday, Rob. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, you're not so... escaping that easily, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, I, I'm, I'm up for whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so far, I, I I've written the title and the first sentence, and, I've got <laughs> and the else, first sentence. So, I've got a much, sentence. <laughs> that shows how much care he had for your work, then. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, at least, at least I've got yeah. a sentence, you know. That's a start. <laughs> well, is it more than I've written of Damien? Well, is it? <laughs> is your sentence just the end? <laughs> <laughs> no. My one's going to be the best. Yeah, you, you just wait. You wait. <laughs> my, my one, my one is going to be the most liked, the most viewed, everything. <laughs> yeah. Rob's one is just going to be, um, hi, I'm Rob. I'm in this series um, just because we wanted everyone in it. <laughs> and that's it. And then we moved on. Yes. <laughs> but no, that might that video is going to get you loads of subscribers. Like you know, PewDiePie. Like better watch out. You know, with with that video. <laughs> <laughs> Theater and audio drama. They're the next big thing. Oh, we'll definitely get over 100 million subscribers with that video. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Stephen's one's written. Uh, my one's written. Of course your one's written. One sentence of... <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 it's the privilege of the writer. I get to choose my favourite stories to read. Um, uh, Stephen's one's a banger as well, to be fair. So... Um, if I say so. <laughs> yeah, if we, uh, if we <laughs> listen to it and realise it's going to be an a absolute pile of horse manure, then... Uh, <laughs> then... Which, which you, was something you used to describe the last video that we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, um, no punches withheld from Damien. It was just, this is awful. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, Rob's one is one ten- sentence long so far, and Damien's one is a like a two-word two idea word. on a spreadsheet. <laughs> Yay! So. <laughs> <laughs> Them two words are the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write something. <laughs> Ideas, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, so here we are, season two of the podcast. What are we doing this season? We've got some ideas, don't we? Yes, we've... Um, we put them all in our ideas hat, actually, and we uh, yes, we we pick one out. If we like it, we'll do it. So I'm just looking at the list here, actually. We've got... Good idea. So we're going to have uh, more guests, yep. hopefully. So we've That's got a, move. a list of one, two, three, four, five, six people that we that we might interview this season. Um, uh, we thought about doing some more sh- sort of standalone audio plays. Um, so that could be quite nice. Uh, I've always got, you know, ideas on a phone note somewhere of something I'd like to do at some point. So, um, hopefully, uh, live broadcasts from the National Theatre and things like that are going to start up soon. So we might do some mm-hmm. reviews of plays and stuff. Mm-hmm. That might be nice. Yeah. Maybe new films, TV shows. Um, and obviously carrying on talking about projects we've got coming up and yeah and talking of the new uh few uh standalone plays yeah uh, stay tuned because at the end of this we've done a sketch for you oh uh, yeah yeah that was one of the ideas was uh rather than doing a quiz every episode like we did in series one we might mix it up so we might do little little radio sketches or uh things like that but don't worry at the end if you... of the episode as well but don't worry, if you're here for the quizzes, we will do quizzes every so often. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we certainly will. The end. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything else? Have we done anything else? Uh, we released the first Welsh language story as Oh, well, we did, yes. While we've been away with Steve's. So Isn't there's more of those on the that, way. The current one with Steve's called Mamiaith? Yes. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Mother tongue in English. And you can find that on the Hereafter Productions Bandcamp, I believe. Yep, and on YouTube as well. Cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to do so many cards in the top corner of YouTube right now. <laughs> oh, sure. You know, Rob, you know that the book you were reading from, the yeah. um, Tips for Actors book? Actors, yeah. So it's by, I didn't twig for a while, it's by Fergus, Fergus Craig, Craig isn't it? yeah, it is. Do you follow him on Twitter? I do not, no. I just uh, found the book. Uh, and it was about acting, and I'm interested in acting, so it was great. <laughs> he He's worth following. I, yeah. I realised quite a while I didn't make the connection. I follow him on Twitter, just coincidentally, because um, he does these little little sketches on there. Um, mm-hmm. So he does he does this one where he he's pretending he's like doing a video message for his son, who's at like a university or something, and he's a bit of a kind of boomer. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's going through a midlife crisis, so those are quite funny. Um, and then he does, uh, he does this other one that I th- it's basically extracts from a novel he's writing. Um, and it's a kind of comedy detective novel. Ooh. Um, about this like local local cop in, uh, Truro or something, who's um. You know, he think he thinks he's kind of really important and cool and sexy and stuff. He thinks he's a kind of James Bond, but he's just <laughs> like a doing these run of the mill type. So I think the book's coming out 
um, but there are little segments from it on his Twitter, which are, mm-hmm. so it's really funny. I'd, I'd recommend mm-hmm. that. The it's a little, book is called it's a Once plug. Upon a Crime. Mm-hmm. That's right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Detective Roger Le Carre is the character. <laughs> and he does this particular... <laughs> He does this particular little delivery. He's like, Detective Roger Le Carre, blah, blah, blah. Mm. It's, it's, it's very good. I'd mm. recommend it. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Fergus Craig, you have just got another follow follower on Twitter. Thanks to James. And another one from I'm me sure too. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch some of those videos. They're really good. Um, there's actually, there's a lot of good like sketch comedy stuff on Twitter, I think. Hmm. Yeah. I don't spend too much time on Twitter, actually, hardly any, only when to, like, share stuff or, you know, when, when we've posted something on YouTube, uh, share that. Um, but other than that, I don't, uh, it's, it's the same with Facebook for me, really. I don't really, you know, you know in, like, the news feed bit, I don't really look at it too much. But, um, yeah, I shall give him a follow and have a look-see at all these projects. They sound interesting. So, thank you. And yeah. just as we speak, I have followed them with both the What's Passes podcast Twitter account and my own personal one. <laughs> wow. Lovely. Um, that was a very convoluted way of plugging our Twitter, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 um, yeah. I... Oh, by the way, we also have Instagram as well. <laughs> oh, we do. Yeah. Facebook. I. I love I love Twitter. I'm a bit of a Twitter goblin, um, but an Instagram I quite like as well. But Facebook is just garbage, isn't it? I hate it. All I mean, you see on Facebook t- these days is people around about Steve's age sharing minion memes. <laughs> <laughs> You're yeah, on about Steve's age, literally. <laughs> <laughs> and and those kind of cutesy like motivational things of like, um, when oh. My mum might have died fifty years ago, but she's still in my heart every day, and it's like a grainy, like picture of like a teddy bear holding a heart or something like that, and it's like, yeah, okay, fine, you do you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to make it clear, I don't do any of them things, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Oh, of course, the the biggest the biggest thing that's happened in the last four months is that Damien's mum, our biggest fan, has uh, got engaged. Yes. Oh yes, she has, oh. and I've met not the to me. <laughs> yes, not to Stephen. Which I, I was shocked. I was shocked when I heard that that she's got not getting got engaged to Steve Arena over here. Really, but Steve Arena. Even if even if even if it did, I am not calling him daddy. <laughs> 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 but no. Um, but if you're out there, Mike, you better treat her good, all right. Well, anyway, you know, congratulations, Marie. So yes, congratulations for listening to everything we do. Yes, congratulations on the engagement. Well, on that note, uh, why don't we play our little sketch that we've recorded yes. earlier? Um, Good idea. It's in t- I think I might actually change the title. Um, the title was uh, "TV Soap Writers Are Psychopaths," um, but yeah, I don't know. I might change the if I change the title, you'll see it on screen. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'll I probably just add an asterisk it. or something to it. Uh, you don't know screen. what it's called, then, James. Yeah, you haven't decided what you're going to change it to. No. Ah. <laughs> well, anyway, enjoy, 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 enjoy. I might as well join in and enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> enjoy. Just pop up half. Just edit my voice in halfway through the sketch. Hope you're enjoying the. Uh, <laughs> hope you're enjoying the sketch. No, James. You, you seem to enjoy your the sound of your own voice far too much. <laughs> Guilty. The time is seven o'clock, which means, as always, it's time to check in on the resident of Pogmansdale. Oi, oi. All right, all right, gas me old mucker. All right, uh, Les, how's tricks? Yeah, not too shabby, mate, not too shabby. Your stay's out of hospital yet? Nah, mate. You're still on life support. I think she'll pull through. Oh, that's good. Aye. And how's your old man? Me dad. Yeah. He's all right, yeah. Is he still, you know? Dead. Yeah. Yeah, but they reckon he'll pull through. Nice one. And how's your Mandy? Well, as good as can be expected, really. He's been pretty depressed recently. What with the bankruptcy, 
The house fire. Her sister being murdered. Her mother died in that tram crash. The cancer. Files and losing the baby. Aye, uh, it was a rough year for her when you put it like that. Hmm. You know, Gaz, I think someone up there has got it in for her. For us all, Les. You think Mandy's had it rough? My Cathy's just been made redundant again. And so soon after losing both her legs and one of her arms in that motorcycle crash at the factory. Her mum's got dementia again. I'm an alcoholic. And to cap it all off, our Sharon's pregnant. Pregnant? But she's only 11. That's what I keep telling her, but she won't hear any of it. I want a baby and you can't stop me, she says. Well, I said you'll have a devil's own job trying to look after it if, God forbid, something were to happen to me or her mum. Aye. Has you not much family left that I'd look after her? No, what with me dad still being dead, and me mam joining Al-Qaeda, and her dad being crippled from the incident with the panther, and all our siblings dying in that suicide cult, and everyone else dying in that coach crash. There's only our Vinny left, and you know what he's like. Oh, don't remind me. How many people's he murdered now? Nineteen. Of course, you'll remember I was put on trial for seven of those over the course of six years. And Cathy was sent down for at least two of them. Aye, and I was charged for three or four myself. Oh, of course, I forgot about that. Still, you'd always be able to pick up a few shifts here if needs be. Aye, or at the kebab shop for that matter. Hey, did you hear about Lucy? About her affair with Tony? No, that was ages ago. Oh, right. Her affair with Cal, then? Uh, no, after that. Oh, you mean... That she's getting married to Pat again? Yeah. What is that now? The fourth time? I think it's only the third. I remember their first wedding, because it was on that boat what sank when Dirty Kev sabotaged it in revenge for Pat sleeping with his sister. Ah, and then there was a the second one. Was that the one where the church collapsed and several people tragically died, prompting Bill to become a firefighter? No, that was the most recent one. The third one? Aye, the third one. Uh, no, the second one was the one where he'd showed up six hours late. Oh, aye, I remember now. She thought he'd jilted her, and so she burned all his earthly belongings. But it turned out he'd been kidnapped by that drug dealer come loan shark he'd got mixed up with after he'd adopted the bloke's daughter. Ah, yeah, that was right. Want another one? Nah, you're right, mate. I think I'm having a heart attack, actually. Oh, no worries, mate. It were your round, anyhow. We received some complaints from the viewers saying that Pugmansdale was becoming a little, how shall we say, far-fetched? They thought the situations we were putting our characters in were implausibly violent, tragic and extreme. Yes, I remember one correspondent that said that if all the terrible things that happened to any given character in Pugmansdale over the course of any given year that had happened to the collective residents of any real village, there would be articles in the paper about the place being cursed. Which was a fair assessment. Which was a fair assessment, yes. Billy Steins. Now, Graham, be fair. Not everyone had the privilege of studying English literature at Cambridge. I mean, try telling Shakespeare that the plot of Othello is implausibly tragic. Tragedy is a catalyst of drama. Everyone with heart of a brain knows that. Anyway... So we took a different approach. I saw a production of Godot at the Old Vic, and thought, that's it. Oh, you right. You want a pint, Gaz? No, I've, uh, I've given up the drink, Les. Oh, aye. Right. You see the footy? Yeah. What, 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 what's happening, then? Well, I'm waiting for Kev to show up. Of course. Darts this evening, isn't it? Aye. What are you waiting for? Just our cafe. Said I'd meet her here. After work. Oh, aye. You enjoy it, new job? Could be worse. Tell me about it. Just going for the slash. Aye. Time is but a veil through which we see disappointment, disillusionment, 
and decay. Entropic and non-corporeal, a child falls from the womb to the grave. It was a disaster. We lost. What was it? Something like 700,000 viewers in the first week alone? Well, the higher-ups were getting touchy. So we tried something different, didn't we? I'd just seen my partner in a production of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. And I thought, hmm, maybe we need to go postmodern. And what was the reaction to that like? Well, frankly, even worse. Even worse, yeah. So, Les, Happy New Year. What do you reckon's in store for us this time, then? Well, to be frank, guys, my hopes are not too high. No? Uh, I really feel like a veil's been lifted on my life recently. Ever since the explosion at the Knicker factory and the second car crash of the series, I've started to realise we're in a tank. What do you mean, a tank? Well, like... Uh, have you ever been to the zoo and seen the lizards behind the glass? Yeah, what about it? Well, we, that, that is to say, all of us here in Bogmansdale, are like those lizards. How do you mean, Les? Well, we exist only for their entertainment. We live only at their mercy. We don't have any real agency in life. No free will. I mean... What happened when you tried to open that corner shop last year? You know what happened, Les. In fact, audience, Gaz. Oh, oh, uh, well, I opened the shop and everything was hunky-dory for a couple of weeks. Then, next thing I know, all place sinks into an abandoned mine shaft. See? Isn't that ridiculous? I missed a bad luck, me. That's what they say down at AA. But you're not, though. We all are. We're worse off than that bloke who survived both Hiroshima and Nagasaki. All of us. Every single one. Well, that's life though, isn't it? No, it's not. That's what I'm saying to you, Gaz. It's not life, it's... Fiction. That's when the real trouble started. The thing is... The thing is, when you make your characters self-aware, you quickly discover there's not much left you can write for them. I mean, the next logical step was to have them discover that they were in a, a TV show. Noticing the cameras, chatting with the lighting designer... Of course, that meant we had to hire actors to play film crews, because obviously... Obviously, you can't have an actual camera crew in the show itself. Not least of all because the cameraman can't act for Toffee. Well, and of course, you still have to actually have someone film in the show. Right, right. And by that stage, we'd rather painted ourselves into a corner. So, the only thing we could think of was to have the pretend camera crew become self-aware themselves. And have them meet the real cameramen, who were of course also actors, and so on and this forth. It was a vicious cycle. A vicious cycle, and a dead end. So what did you do? Well... Well... Uh, sorry, you go. No, you go. All right, um, well, basically... Basically, we decided to do a soft reboot. And what did that entail? We stopped them from being software for a start. The higher-ups told us we basically needed to follow the viewing figures, so we went back to where we'd started. And how did you deal with the issue of implausibility? Well... Oh, it was all rather uh, ingenious, really. We basically gave the characters very short memories. Yeah, we realised that we could kind of have our cake and eat it by basically just having the characters forget every bad thing that happened to them about four weeks after it had happened. And what we discovered is that, in actual fact, the audience have very short memories too. That's right. Ta-ra! And that noise means we've come to the end of the episode. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like, comment below, and subscribe. This podcast is also available on a number of other streaming services. Why not check us out on iTunes? Don't forget to check out the links in the description for our other channels and websites. And on that note, it's a toodaloo from me. It's a goodbye from me. It's a bye from me. Uh, and to play us out... 
Uh, here's a uh, extract from the score of our short film, Broken Homecoming. Hope you enjoy, and thank you, and goodbye. Thank you. 